I'm going to bring in the OPC interface to demonstrate again how you would configure it to run as a service. So if I look at my current services listing, I do not see the Pi OPC interface. In order for it to run as a service, obviously I'll need to do that. So I'm going to use ICU to do this. This would be as opposed to the way we previously did it from the command prompt. So I'll choose to import this batch file. It's under OPC int. As I said, we include these .new files. And so I'm going to load that. Actually, I don't need to rename it because this is actually going to rename that for me. Now, during the import, we're being asked if, um, if we would like to switch to another server because the server that's identified so far is not in the known servers table. So I'm going to switch over and say, yes, I would like to say that the server we're sending data to is this computer. It's a server called Mobile VBC. Okay. And it actually detects that there's a host parameter missing. So I'll go ahead and say yes. I'll go ahead and add this. Now this is actually about the third time I've tested this. That's why it created this third instance. I don't know if you noticed that. It's actually going to give this a, um, a append a 3 at the end of the service name. There we go. And here is all the important information, the point source, the interface ID, the scan classes, etc. And the server is mobile VBC. But the point I wanted to make is, look, you can, you can neither start nor stop the interface. That tells me, well, it tells me it, it's, it has not even been installed as a service. Because if it had been, we would be able to choose one of those two. So if I go into service, here's my confirmation. Notice, see the create button is available. Normally, if this has already been installed as a service, the create would be dimmed out. So there's a couple of things we can do here. Or we want to uh, verify here. First of all, let's just make sure that the display name is correct. I'm going to take the default. The default is OPC and 3 because I've tried this three times in testing. and So that just is the name that is being generated for me. And that, that's fine. The startup type is going to be suggested to be automatic and that looks good in this case and for dependencies um, what I would suggest is that you set up the pi buffering uh, service as a dependency because well in the case of this particular interface we would like to have this buffer data uh, locally if it can't get to the server for right now though we're, we're going to configure that later on so for right now I'm going to remove that you're going to notice we're going to be reminded several times uh, as we work with this, the ICU will tend to recognize that buffering is not there and suggest that you add it. Okay. Now, some of the interfaces actually require that you log on as a specific user, like, for example, one with administrative privileges. So take a look at the interface documentation for that. And once you've made all those configurations, then you simply choose Create. And what this will do is it will go ahead and create that as a Windows service with the proper dependencies and the display name you've selected, etc. So we can verify this by going into the services applet. And let's just refresh this. We should see that there's a brand new service here. It is called Pi OPC N3. Uh, it has the proper startup type. It's automatic, which we had chosen. This is telling me you know, everything about that interface. Now, just to uh, rehash a couple of things, with regard to dependencies. I did not set this up to be dependent to anything because I'd like to start it up independently without buffering initially. But normally when we're doing this remotely on a remote data collection node, we would set this to be dependent on BuffServe. Also, uh, sometimes if you've got this interface running on, for example, a Pi home node, well, this Pi home node is going to require that PyNet Manager be actually up and running before this interface is. So again, uh, if this is running on a home node, you can choose to make it dependent on PyNet Manager. In that case, of course, you're not buffering because it's local. But those two things I ignored in this example.